It's amazing how sometimes our faith in God only fails when we hold a faulty understanding of who He is. We fall short and we put Him down to our circumstances. And our faith gets depleted when we bring Him down to our circumstances. And we hold this faulty understanding that He is against us, that He is not for us, that He should have come through for us, that He's not faithful, that He is not good, that He is harsh, that He is punishing. I don't know what name perhaps we've done in our anger. I know that I have at time have called my God unfaithful. And I knew that when the words came out of my mouth, I knew they were wrong because I knew that that was a faulty understanding because I was looking at my situation so overbearing, so overwhelming that I said, God, you're not being faithful. And ever so gently, but with the strongest rebuke, he said, but your story's not finished yet. So how can I be called unfaithful? How can I be called unfaithful when it's not over yet? Is the story over? It's not over, so you can't call me unfaithful. It feels like I'm unfaithful, but I'm always working on your behalf. I'm always working in the shadows. I'm always working in the hidden. You see, I think sometimes staying put in the midst of adversity, it takes courage. It takes faith to believe that God's in control and it takes faith that God's going to work it out. But some of us, when these sorts of things happen, we bail. We bail our families, we bail our friends, we bail the church, we give up on friendships, we isolate ourselves, we blame God, we go back to an easier way of life. And I'm telling you, when we do this, we circumvent the redemptive power of God in our lives. Every time I've wanted to bow out when it's too hard, Every time I've wanted to give up when adversity is knocking at my door, sometimes back to back to back. Oh, I've been with my friends when I have wept on their shoulders going, I can't do this anymore. It's not worth it. That I remember, persevere, persevere. And what you're developing is character. What you're developing is hope. What you're developing is a tenacious spirit that says, my God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. None of us enjoy suffering. It's not something we sign up for when we become a Christian. Like, Woo-hoo. But maybe we should actually talk about prerequisite of becoming a follower of Christ. You will die and you will suffer. But that's not the end of the story because what you gain far surpasses anything that you had previously. What you gain, what you gain, what you gain. Romans 5.3 says, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. We have to change our perspective because we know that our suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, character, hope, and hope that does not disappoint. We're wanting to take it away, take it away, take it away, take it away, take it away. And God goes, you don't even realise that this is gonna save you. This wrestle, this suffering, this pain, this adversity. Oh, I did not inflict it upon you, but I will use it. And through it, you will become what I have destined you to become.